A question we're often asked is why are we all installing air to water heat pumps? So that's an air source heat pump that heats the radiators. And why aren't we installing air to air heat pumps? So like aircon, which is sometimes incorrectly known as, uh, but basically you have an air source heat pump outside and a fan blowing cooler or hotter air inside to heat or cool the building. Air to air heat pumps are much cheaper and seem to be less kind of bother. So that's what we're looking into today. So actually, although we don't install this at all, we do have some experience with it. So today I'm just gonna explain my experience and my opinion on it. This is no way a guru's opinion on air to air. If you have an opinion or disagree with what I'm saying or agree, please let us know in the comments below uh, because we wanna learn too. So here's how I have a little bit of experience with that. Four years ago, roughly around today, we moved into these offices. The rest of the building didn't have heating for the winter because we were kind of mucking around and putting in other things. So we were all based in this showroom. This showroom only has air to air heating. That's uh, an air to air cassette up there. So that blows in hot air during the winter or cooler air during the summer uh, to heat or cool the room. I wasn't really that impressed to be quite honest. In fact, actually we've kind of got a super duper kind of cooling arrangement here. The external window out there, which you may have seen in other videos, I'm sure our editor will chuck it in now. We have what's called Breeze Soleil PV. So as we've got right now, we've got the sun uh, after midday uh, when it's in the west of the skyline, shines in through this window and heats up this building. Our Breeze Soleil PV panels block the sunshine from coming into the room, so prevent it from overheating. And while they're doing that, they're also generating electricity which powers our air-to-air -air heat pumps. So it's like double cooling and double cheap. First of all, let's look at why we would install this instead. So there's different types of air-to-air. -air. You can have mini splits, for example, where you've got one unit outside and then multiple units in each room internally that can eject the, the hot air. The uh, other reasons you might install air-to-air -air instead of air-to-water is it's very good at cooling and that's kind of where it came from. It's much cheaper. If you were gonna do an entire building, uh, or, or an entire home, it'll probably cost maybe even under half of what you'd pay for a heat pump. So it does really seem like a no-brainer until we look into more specifics. If you, for example, have really small radiators throughout and your radiator pipe work is undersized, it may make even more sense to have air-to-air -air so you don't have to replace all those pipes. Now, the reason we in the UK generally go for air to water is because we've already got wet systems installed. In America, for example, where they may not have wet systems, it may make sense just to put an air to air system in. And when the savings were kind of marginal and electricity was cheap, didn't matter as much. Now electricity is very precious. It all of a sudden does matter. Let's look at the pros and cons. If you install air to air, you still have to heat hot water. So if we now look at, if you have to heat a hot water tank uh, for, for showering and bathing, etc., you're gonna have to heat that with an immersion. An immersion has an efficiency of 100% or a cop of one. If you follow this channel, you're aware of heat pumps. They have efficiencies of between three and 500% or scops of three to five. If you can heat your hot water with a heat pump, it is three to five times more efficient. Now you may say, yeah, but I'm gonna use cheap energy to heat my hot water cylinder from the evening. Well, that's great, but if you can run that cheap energy through a heat pump, to heat your hot water, you save more energy. Uh, again, if you're trying to be careful and precious with your free PV energy, you don't just want to absorb a kilowatt and dump a kilowatt. You want to absorb a kilowatt and dump three to five kilowatts into your hot water. That's the best way to conserve your precious electricity. Then you can divert it to your car, etc. Okay, so that's one reason why you may not use air to air. Second reason is you're going to have to have cassettes in potentially each room. Rooms that's going to be difficult in are um, wet rooms and bathrooms. You're going to have to have a white cassette on the wall. You may not have one in there, but it will be slightly cooler in there. And typically you design those rooms to be slightly warmer because you're normally wearing less clothes in them. And if you've got a more period property, which is most homes across the UK, say it's Victorian or Edwardian, it's not really going to fit with the theme of your house. Radiators are just more subjectively pleasing to look at. Now, outside of all of that, what did I think while I was in this room for six or seven months during the winter, having air to air? Well, the first thing I found was the temperature swung quite a lot. So the temperature was quite often slightly too hot or slightly too cold, and it kind of wouldn't sit still. Uh, that was notable, and it was notable by everyone of us in here. There was probably about five of us in here on average. 
uh, and it did kind of just dart around a lot. That was also notable because everyone was fighting over the thermostat continuously. The other thing I noticed was uh, the noise. Although I noticed it here, which wasn't really that bad because there was you know, radio playing and people chatting anyway, if I was at home reading a book or trying to watch a quiet documentary for three hours, I would have noticed that noise kicking in and out. Again, subjective, perhaps you'll get used to it, I don't know, but it's definitely worth bearing in mind before investing that sort of money or making that kind of decision. Fourth, I notice air movement. You do just feel it play against your body, but there's more to it than that. So when you have air movement within a room, you have what's naturally known around you as a boundary layer. So around me right now, I'm gonna have a slightly warm layer of air where my body's trying to reject my 37 degree temperature. And that almost acts like a thermal blanket around me, keeping heat back in. The minute you have, and this is how fans work to cool you down, even though it's blowing the same air temperature around. The minute you have air movement within a room, it removes moves that boundary layer and it makes you feel colder, meaning you have to turn the thermostat back up. So I did find we had to have it hotter in here than we would have had to have it had we have had radiant heating. So radiant heating is more what we're used to with typical traditional radiators and specifically low temperature heating. The lower temperature your radiators, the more radiant effect you're using. So radiators use convection, where they heat up the air, the air rises, cooler air goes in, and they use radiant. The lower temperature heating system we have, the more efficient it is, and the more radiant heat we have. We'll do, perhaps do another video on radiant heating another time, but it basically means you feel more comfortable at lower temperatures because there is less air movement in the room and for other reasons which I'm not gonna go into today. Air to air doesn't do any radiant heating. It's the least comfortable type of heating. It's just convection, which means heat conducted via the air. So like I say, the temperature did go up and down and we did fight over the stat, but it wasn't the worst thing. We we're in an office, we're either kind of wearing a jumper that we can take off or put back on or whatever. If again, I was sat down for three hours in my living room, I don't wanna be mucking around with that. I wanna be more comfortable. So based on my experience so far, I'm not really sold on air to air in the home. Definitely could be persuaded though had I have seen a different system. And obviously, air-to-air -air systems can't work with underfloor heating, which is the ultimate radiant heater. If you like warm, toasty feet, it is the most efficient or the most comfortable type of emitter there is, underfloor heating. Air-to-air -air systems aren't gonna heat that. If you do have air-to-air -air and you want underfloor heating, you may have to have electric, which is gonna be just impossibly expensive very soon, if not now. Another thing I did notice was because, uh, and this happens in summer and winter actually, the air seems drier and it's kind of moving more consistently. You do feel like your skin dries out. And again, these are very kind of minor details. It's just what I noticed, having come from a normal traditional wet system, you may be fine after a month, but I did find it noticeable personally. This is very much an opinion-based video. Now, the only other reason you may consider air to air may be because of efficiency. Now, first of all, let's start off with the fact that you're gonna be a loss here for air to air because you have to heat your cylinder at a cop of one, but let's ignore that and say you have some other solution. Air to air is purported to have quite high cops. Now, a cop is great to be high, but what's important for heating specifically is scop. We may cool I don't know, two weeks of the year, which doesn't really matter, but we heat for six months of the year, say. We want that entire period to be a good scop, so that's the average over the season. It's typically assumed that because air to water heat pumps get more efficient the lower the flow temperature, then if we had an air to air system that needed to blow out air that was say 23 degrees, that must have super duper efficiency. And unfortunately that's slightly incorrect thinking. Now the reason for that is because air has a very low specific heat capacity, 0.7 kilojoules per kilogram or joules per gram. That means you need 0.7 joules of energy to heat one gram of air by one degrees Celsius. Now water, on the other hand, has 4.2 joules per gram or kilojoules per kilogram. That will take 4.2 joules per gram of water to heat by one degrees Celsius. Now you might say, well, that's taking more energy to heat up, but you could look at it another way. You could say one gram of water will carry more joules per degree Celsius of energy than air. What that means is essentially air is more of an insulator. That's why we put gaps between skins of building and flasks 
because air is a good insulator. And because air is a good insulator, and I'll just add that water is the best conductor there is. A specific heat capacity of 4.2 is amazing. Because it doesn't carry air very well and it insulates, we're gonna have to make the refrigerant much hotter and the, the heat exchanger much hotter to squeeze the energy into that air as we're blasting it out. That is helped by the turbulence that's created when you're blowing air through this cassette unit, which is the unit that sits on the inside of the building, but it still has to get hotter to put that energy into the air. And that takes scop back down or the cop back down. So they kind of balance out. Now, we can't find much information on this out there at all. If you have any information, please let us know. As an in-house experiment, we are going to, this winter, test our air-to-air -air system for a few days, maybe a week. We're gonna put some shading over this window and measure how much energy it takes to keep the room at X temperature. Then we're also going to heat this room with uh, normal electric fan heaters at 100% efficiency. And then we're going to use our air to water heat pump to heat the same room to see what's most efficient in this scenario. Every property will be different. Uh, and what we want an idea of is how efficient or what is the scop of this air to air. Scop of air to water is very easy to measure. It's very easy to calculate. Air to air is a lot more difficult because you have to work out the airflow moving through the unit. So what we found so far is that air to air heat pumps are normally a scop of between three and four, which doesn't really sound any better than a normal air to water heat pump, potentially worse, I don't know. Also add to that fact that if you have to have your room one to two degrees hotter, that's gonna use more energy. So even if it was the same scop, if you're using more energy, it's not, it's less efficient. It's obviously more efficient to keep your room temperature lower. So in summary, and until we have any more data, here's the pros and cons. Pros. It's much cheaper. So a whole house could be done for say 8K. Bear in mind, if you're paying 15K for a heat pump, you're gonna get 5K off that currently through the bus scheme. So 8K versus 10K brings it in a little bit closer. There's no pipework or radiator upgrades. Although bear in mind, if you've got radiators and pipework, you're probably gonna have to take that all out which will make it more expensive if you want it in later on. Importantly, it's awesome at cooling, which is becoming more and more important every day. And while it's cooling, it also dehumidifies the air, which makes you naturally feel cooler anyway. Humidity is an insulator for heat. Cons of air to air. The room temperature, in my opinion, and in this example, does seem to over and undershoot a lot more than radiant heat, which radiant heat heats up the walls and furniture and has kind of a steady output because this is blasting warmer air and then turning it off and on and off. It does kind of jump all over the place. I don't know if technology's improved, but that's my experience so far. Your room temperature may have to be slightly hotter to account for the fact that there's air movement within the room. They do make noise. In common areas, in communal areas, in hallways, in offices, the noise doesn't really matter or bother anyone. In fact, we've got one running right now. If you're sitting there reading a book or watching a film, that may make a difference to you. I think it's a subjective thing, but that can only fit in the con column. You will have to find another heat source for your hot water. Now, if that means another heat pump for your hot water, you're spending so much money, you may as well just have an air to water heat pump, especially if they're similar scops. If you are just gonna heat your hot water with a normal electric immersion element, that's gonna have a cop of one. It's gonna waste more energy from your batteries if you have batteries, or it means you're gonna have to use more electricity from the grid. You're always better off generating more heat energy on site. Dry skin. Personally, experiencing one of these did give me dry skin, but again, this is just my personal experience. So that's it for this one. Uh, like I said before, this is very much opinion-based. If you've got any information on these, or this is kind of your area, and you would like to perhaps let the rest of us know about what you've found out, please let us know in the comments. Maybe even ask in the comments to get in touch, and we could even do a collaboration. Absolutely happy to do that. Uh, and that's it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit like, make sure you subscribe, etc etc and i'll see you in the next one